The Legend of Zelda is a beloved and groundbreaking series that spans generations of gamers worldwide. So when it was announced that a spin-off title was combining Zelda with the outrageous Dynasty Warriors series, it's easy to see why Zelda fans were more than a little curious. What became of this unexpected merging was an entertaining and well-received love letter to the Zelda franchise and its fans. I'm Nikki with Super Coin Crew, the channel that's non-stop Nintendo, and we're tackling Hyrule Warriors and the game's recent venture to the 3DS, Hyrule Warriors Legends. So grab your tunic and Master Sword because Super Coin Crew is hacking and slashing through a horde of 107 facts you should know about Hyrule Warriors. Number 1. Hyrule Warriors Legends is a 3DS title developed by Koei Tecmo. The gameplay is considered a hybrid of the Dynasty Warriors series and Nintendo's Legend of Zelda franchise. Number 2. Both the Omega Force and Team Ninja divisions of Koei Tecmo worked on Hyrule Warriors and Hyrule Warriors Legends. Omega Force was in charge of creating the basic Dynasty Warriors style gameplay, while Team Ninja made the one-on-one -on -one and boss battle sections of the games. Number 3. Hyrule Warriors Legends was officially revealed by Nintendo during its E3 2015 event. Number 4. Hyrule Warriors Legends is not just a port, but an updated version of the Hyrule Warriors, which was released for the Wii U back in September of 2014 for the US. It features new items, levels, modes, and even warriors. Their hope was to appeal to new players, but also those who enjoyed the Wii U title. Number 5. When asked about why Hyrule Warriors Legends was being made, producer Yosuke Hayashi said upon the release of Hyrule Warriors, he had heard a lot of fan feedback which advocated a portable version of the game. It's always nice to hear about devs taking fans' opinions seriously. Number 6. In the reveal trailer, it was shown that Tetra from The Wind Waker will be an added playable character. She wields a saber, which is significantly longer than the dagger she wields in Wind Waker, and a pistol. Number 7. The King of Red Lions, aka the King of Hyrule, was also announced as a new playable character. His unique moveset revolves around a weaponized sail and the ability to transform into his iconic boat form. Number 8. A few months after the E3 reveal, it was announced that another character from the Wind Waker will be playable, Toon Link. Not the biggest of surprises when you think about it, but cool nonetheless. Like you'd imagine, Toon Link relies heavily on his sword and shield, though he is a bit faster than regular Link and favors spin attacks. Number 9. Skull Kid from Majora's Mask also makes his way to the battlefield as a new playable character. With Ocarina in hand and the help of Tattle and Tail, Skull Kid floats around wreaking havoc. Number 10. Ganondorf is a playable character in the Wii U version of the game, but in the 3DS version, he is being tweaked. Instead of his swords, he will be wielding his trusty trident as he has in several older Zelda games, such as A Link to the Past. Number 11. One of the most talked about additions to Hyrule Warriors Legends is Linkle. She is a crossbow wielding hero that bombards her enemies with arrows, bombs, and devastating kicks. Number 12. Linkle reloads her crossbow simultaneously by hopping in the air and drawing the string back with her boots, which is quite an impressive feat. Number 13. Much like her name, Linkle's design is heavily influenced by Link. With her blonde hair, pointy ears, green hood, and brown boots, she's been stirring up some theories as to why she's such a Link lookalike. Hmm. Number 14. Linkle was conceptualized as Link's little sister in Hyrule Warriors, but there were mixed feelings with how this interfered with Errol. For Legends, the idea was brought back to the table and it was decided to simply make her an aspiring adventurer that channels some of Link's vibes. Number 15. Linkle is from a small cuckoo farming village in Hyrule. Rule. Number 16. The compass Linkle wears around her neck is a family heirloom given to her by her grandmother. She believes this compass is proof that she is meant to become a hero. Number 17. Ironically, Linkle has a poor sense of direction. Number 18. Linkle begins her venture where she is told that Hyrule Castle is in danger. Grabbing her gear, she heads off but is immediately sidetracked by her heroic compulsion to help those in need and her apparent inability to use a compass or read signs. I'm in no position to give her flag. I still use Google Maps to get to my friend's house, despite having been there several times. Number 19. Like other features that were added to the game, Linkle's inclusion in Hyrule Warriors Legends was greatly influenced by fans, who showed interest in the character, whose concept art was shown in the Premium Boxes art book. Number 20. According to E.G. Anuma, Linkle's design, play style, and overall feel meshes so well with the Zelda franchise, they plan on keeping her in mind for future titles. Number 21. Anuma's interest in collaborating with the Warriors series was sparked after getting his hands on One Piece Pirate Warriors. He considered what a Legend of Zelda collaboration would look like. Not long after that, Shigeru Miyamoto told him Koei Tecmo came calling with the idea of a Legend of Zelda Warriors game. Number 22. Rather than 
a Zelda flavored Dynasty Warriors game, the project began as very much the opposite. Being so familiar with how the games worked, the developers went about building their own Legend of Zelda game, complete with puzzle solving and RPG mechanics. At this point, however, Miyamoto intervened saying there was no point to a collaboration if they were just creating another Zelda game. They were advised to create something more in their skill set, to take the places and the faces of the Legend of Zelda and mold them to the elements of Dynasty Warriors. Number 23. In an interview, Hayashi said the development team spent a lot of time fine-tuning Hyrule Warriors Legends to run smoothly on the 3DS's hardware. Number 24. Due to the 3DS having less processing power compared to the Wii U, the team had to reduce the view distance on the battlefield when porting Hyrule Warriors. Number 25. Hayashi knew that the main draw of the game was the sheer amount of enemies a player could take on, as it's the main draw to the 1 vs 1000 style. So they had to come up with ways to get close to those huge numbers players were used to. The solution was disabling the stereoscopic 3D on the Nintendo 3DS and 3DS XL. The new 3DS and 3DS XL, however, will be able to handle 3D visuals given their improved CPU. Number 26. In an interview, Hayashi stated that during the development of Hyrule Warriors, he heard a lot of concerns from the fans of the Zelda series. They were worried for their flagship Nintendo title and what a hybrid like this could do to it. Hayashi and his team knew they had to make a game that they'd enjoy as fans of the Zelda series if they really wanted to get the approval of other Zelda fans. Number 27. Eiji Inuma, who was brought in as a supervisor, joked that the team must have had great plans for this non-sequel, non-port, non-expansion version of Hyrule Warriors, having incorporated the audacious title of, quote, Legends. However, this isn't a new idea for Koei Tecmo, as they've been releasing Extreme Legends expansions for their Dynasty Warriors series since the third game. Number 28. Hyrule Warriors story revolves around Ocarina of Time, Twilight Princess, and Skyward Sword. The inclusion of the Wind Waker was left out due to the stylistic variations, but it is being included in Legends. Number 29. The Wind Waker story in Hyrule Warriors Legends takes place after the happenings of The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker. Number 30. With having the game on the Nintendo 3DS, it was only natural for the dev team to somehow integrate Street Pass, so it was included in Adventure Mode. Number 31. The director of the game, Kasaki Furusawa, worked alongside producers Hisashi Konyuma and Yusuke Hayashi. Number 32. Masato Koike and Yuki Matsumura were the composers for the game, so you can thank them for the epic score. Number 33. Toon Link and Skull Kid shared the same voice actor, Sachi Matsumoto. Number 34. Mikaku Komatsu is the voice of the newcomer, Linkle. Number 35. The voice actor for Wizzero, Tadashi Miyazawa, also voices Solomon Muto for Yu-Gi-Oh! GX and Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Monsters in Japan. Number 36. Saori Seto, who voices Sheik, is also Evergreen from Fairy Tail, Grafia Lucifuge from High School DXD, and Mio Sakamoto from Strike Witches 2. Number 37. Lana is a new character to the Legend of Zelda series and was created for Hyrule Warriors on the Wii U. Concept art reveals that Lana and Sia were both originally meant to be fairies, with one apparently being good and the other bad based on their designs. Number 38. Phantom Ganon is a new boss in Hyrule Warriors Legends. He wields two swords and uses magic to beat his opponent. Like in The Wind Waker, he tosses magic attacks at players while teleporting around to try and gain an upper hand. Number 39. Look out for an ability Phantom Ganon has never had before. It allows him to prevent the use of items, which could put you in quite the pickle. Number 40. The Helmorok King is another new boss added into Hyrule Warriors Legends. Number 41. A new mode has been added to Hyrule Warriors Legends titled My Fairy. This new mode allows players to raise and customize their own fairies however they like. Stats, abilities, and even clothes are all changeable. Number 42. There are four different activities you can send your fairies on. Dining, which helps you raise your fairy. The salon, which lets you change your fairy's clothing and equipment. School, which helps you gain rental skills. And then party, which lets you connect via local wireless connection to get rental skills from other players. Number 43. Fairies accompany players during adventure mode, which is why it's important to raise them and equip them with skills and equipment to best aid you. They can have a max of three rental slots, which can be filled with a skill daily. So when renting a skill, make sure you use it to its fullest while you have it. Number 44. Hyrule Warriors is not canon and takes place in a separate dimension according to Anuma. He actually went on to say Hyrule Warriors could be forced into the timeline if it had to, but they don't want to do that for its ties in too many games from different parts of the timeline. Number 45. If you're wondering how this timeline crossing story works, basically Ganondorf's soul has been split up and sealed in different times. Sia, a new villain to The Legend of Zelda, creates trans-dimensional portals to create a massive army and collect the pieces of the Triforce from Link and Zelda. All this is done so she can open even more portals that lead to the pieces of Ganondorf's fragmented soul. Basically, long story short, portals. Number 
46. Anuma was intrigued by how One Piece Pirate Warriors involved battles that had many bases and required players to figure out in which order to take them out. Quote, this is not something that has been in previous Zelda games, and so it was a very exciting idea for me to connect with. Number 47. Anuma told Kotaku during an interview that if there's a significant increase in female players with Hyrule Warriors because there are more female protagonists, he's all for having playable female characters in the next Zelda game for Wii U. Number 48. One of the more out of nowhere characters included in Hyrule Warriors is Agatha, the princess of the Insect Kingdom. As such, attacks naturally revolve around shiny butterflies and beetles. Number 49. Link is the only character available in every level of the game. Way to hog the spotlight, buddy. Just kidding, we love you and never ever go away. Number 50. There are a ton of unlockable weapons in the game, with Link having the most, including the Hylian Sword, Magic Rod, Gauntlet, the Great Fairy, Master Sword, his horse, and the Spinner. Number 51. There are also a variety of costumes to get for the various characters, again with Link having the most. My favorite is the Fierce Deity Link because it's just so cool and a sweet reference for fans of Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. Number 52. To unlock the Master Sword's weapon slot, which requires players to kill 25,000 enemies, they must first collect every weapon on the adventure map. Number 53. Just like in Zelda games, players replenish health by collecting hearts and their maximum health can be increased through the collection of heart pieces. Number 54. The four and yellow bar under the player's heart is the special attack gauge, which allows the use of special attack and is fueled by defeating enemies or collecting force fragments. Number 55. Familiar to Zelda fans is the Magic Gauge, which appears to the left of the Hearts and the Special Attack Gauge. Unlike normal Zelda games, the only use the Magic Gauge has is to enter the Force Spirit Mode, which increases attack, speed, and range, which is still quite useful. Number 56. Anuma considered giving Link voice acting and a personality. Anuma replied, We could just make him talk. We could just give him a voice and have him speak. But does that add to how fun the game is? Does that add to the experience? It might actually just make it the same as a lot of other games. By not having him talk, it kind of lowers the hurdle for the player to really feel attached to Link. Number 57. Hyrule Warriors features a two-player mode where one player can play using the television screen and the other can use the Wii U gamepad. Having that couch co-op capability has made for some really fun times. Number 58. Unlike the Wii U version, Hyrule Warriors Legends is only single player. This is most likely due to the Nintendo 3DS's hardware capabilities and the difficulty it would have been sync up that much chaos between systems. Number 59. All of the new characters added to Legends can be transferred over to the Wii U version of the game using codes included in the box. Number 60. Just like the Wii U version of the game, if a player scans an amiibo from the Super Smash Bros. series, they will receive a new weapon or other bonuses. Number 61. If a player has the Wolf Link amiibo released with The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess HD, they can use it to unlock an advanced weapon for Minda. Number 62. All playable characters include Link, Young Link, Zelda, Impa, Sheik, Tingle, Darunia, Ruto, Minna, Twilight Minna, Fi, Zant, Ganondorf, Girahim, Lana, Agatha, Sia, Volga, Wizro, Skull Kid, Toon Link, Tetra, King of Hyrule, Medley, and of course, Linkle. Number 63. All of the DLC characters available in Hyrule Warriors for the Wii U will be available right out of the box in Hyrule Warriors Legends. That's awesome. Number 64. Challenge mode has been removed from Hyrule Warriors Legends. This was probably done to put a greater focus on adventure mode. Number 65. Ganon and the Giant Kuko are not playable characters. Aww. Number 66. In Hyrule Warriors, Princess Zelda is actually Queen Zelda. As one who rules over a kingdom would, she commands an army. At the start of the game, Link is but a trainee destined to become something greater. Number 67. To unlock characters and weapons, players must advance through the story and adventure mode. Number 68. Rupees are used to upgrade weapons, like in most Legend of Zelda games so make sure you pick those up. Number 69. In addition to Hyrule Warriors Legends is the ability to flawlessly transition between different warriors while on the battlefield. Number 70. Choose wisely. A maximum of four characters can be sent into battle. Number 71. Due to the addition of character swapping, stories had to be slightly adjusted so that they made sense when a player switched. Number 72. The ability to switch warriors with the tap of a button spawned the idea of incorporating puzzles that can only be solved by using certain characters along with other segments 
achievements that make the most out of this newly added feature. Number 73. The battlefields of Hyrule Warriors are inspired by iconic settings from the Legend of Zelda series. Hyrule Field, Death Mountain, Palace of Twilight, Lake Hylia, Ganon's Tower, and Skyloft are a few of the locations featured throughout the game. Number 74. New levels were added to Legends based on the Wind Waker, including Windfall Island, Dragon Roost Island, Forsaken Fortress, and one inspired by the Earth and Wind Temples. Number 75. The Golden Ocarina is a new item found in Hyrule Warriors Legends that allows players to warp around to different owl statues. Number 76. The hammer is also new to Hyrule Warriors Legends. This item lets players activate switches that set off cannons which clear blocked paths. Number 77. Legend Mode makes a fragment of the game, but it may be worth your time. Completing it unlocks all the Adventure Mode maps, unlocks a new difficulty level for Legend Mode scenarios dubbed Hero, allows you to get extra heart pieces, and if you nab all the Skulltulas, you'll unlock Link's Zora Tunic. Pretty sweet deal indeed. Number 78. Don't waste your time running towards weapons and materials left on the battlefield. If it's on the ground, it will be awarded to you at the end of your battle. Number 79. In the game, you can use rupees and materials to craft badges that will greatly power up your character. Number 80. At the training dojo, you can spend rupees to level up your characters, raising both their base attack power and maximum health. Number 81. Link is a mute in Hyrule Warriors as he is in most of the Legend of Zelda franchise. He's accompanied by a new fairy companion named Proxy who talks on our hero's behalf familiarly exclaiming, hey, listen, from time to time. That of course is a reference to Navi from Ocarina of Time. Number 82. A custom release in the Master Quest DLC for Princess Ruto is an homage to the Indigo Go's lead vocalist Lulu who made her first appearance in Majora's Mask. Number 83. Remember that really weird postman in the Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time? Of course you do. And you've always wanted to play as him, right? Well, today is almost your lucky day. In the Twilight Princess DLC, Link gets a postman costume, which is hilarious. Number 84. Kukos appear during certain levels of Hyrule Warriors. If provoked enough, the Kukos will, of course, swarm and bum rush you, just like in Ocarina of Time. The polish of some of these subtleties are truly appreciated. Number 85. Adventure Mode lets players navigate through various scenarios areas which unlocks rewards. When the map is fully revealed, it is identical to the 8-bit map from the original Legend of Zelda. Number 86. If players meet specific criteria, most of which include racking up 1,000 KOs, a gold Skulltula will appear somewhere on the battlefield. So get to it, you completionists. Number 87. Every weapon has an elemental property. Those properties can include fire, water, lightning, light, and dark. Each element has a different effect. Water, for example, will deal extra damage over time, while light increases damage as you you continually attack large groups of enemies. Number 88. Using different weapons change the way characters fight. For example, one-handed swords focus on speed, while heavier weapons will prioritize damage. This gives the player a bit of freedom with how they choose to take on the hordes of enemies. Number 89. Using the Link Amiibo unlocks the spinner weapon from Twilight Princess, so enjoy toppling over enemies on your top. Number 90. To get an A rank in Adventure Mode, you need to finish in under 15 minutes, take less than 4,000 damage, which is about 10 hearts, and kill at least 1,200 enemies. Number 91. To unlock the Great Fairy, you need to reach the bottom left corner of the map in Adventure Mode. Use the Water Arrow on the Ring of Fire and complete the mission in that square. This also means you have to complete the adjacent square with the Gold Medal rank. Number 92. Though the Great Fairy is Link's quote, weapon, he doesn't actually do too much when using her. Through a twisted turn of events, Link is the one who's captured in a bottle. That's karma for ya. Number 93. Link will appear in adventure mode when you street pass another player. Helping that Link will give you special rewards. Number 94. Besides a warrior's primary weapon, they can also use a plethora of sidearms. To cycle through them, just use left and right on the d-pad. Number 95. The final DLC raised the level cap to 255, so be prepared for some serious grinding if you want to max out all your warriors. Number 96. Similar to the Legend of Zelda series, characters can't jump on command in Hyrule warriors because you know they can take out thousands of enemies in minutes but jumping freely is just too difficult number 97 break all the pots they have a chance to drop power-ups which give you short boosts to your stats number 98 keep your eyes peeled for lieutenants captains and commanders on the battlefield they drop useful materials used to upgrade your character number 99 there are three types of badges attack defense and assist I recommend focusing on attack it's the most useful number 100 there are 44 achievement medals to earn in high 
Hyrule Warriors. Number 101. The smithy lets you fuse weapons together to transfer skills between them. Number 102. Yurahim has one of the creepiest costumes available in the game. Kamaro's mask, which, if you remember, comes from Majora's mask and resembles a head sewn onto the wearer's skull. It's even more terrifying in HD. Number 103. Hyrule Warriors for the Wii U is the first Warriors game where the characters don't talk on the battlefield. Minus, of course, their iconic hi -ya! and ah! Number 104. Besides Legend of Zelda, Anubis said a dream of his would be to make a Warriors title using characters from either the Super Mario Bros. series or Star Wars. Both sound incredibly entertaining. Number 105. In Japan, a premium box edition of the game includes an art book and a compass clock which replicates the one Linkle wears. There's also a treasure box edition which includes the art book, compass clock, a golden ocarina, and a fairy plush. Number 106. United States and Japan receive a Hyrule Warriors theme for the 3DS home menu when they purchase the game. Number 107. Koei Tecmo was astonished when they found out Hyrule Warrior sales in North America far exceeded their expectations, with 190,000 units sold in the first week. Well, looks like you made it through the battle. Congratulations! Which fact was your favorite? Is there an awesome fact we should have included? Let us know in the comments below and what we should cover in our next 107 fact video. Keep it here to Super Coin Crew for non-stop Nintendo. Be sure to join the coin and subscribe. Thanks for watching.